Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about the structure of the eye. What we're going to do is follow the path of a ray of light that is coming into the eyeball. So a ray of light coming into the eye, the very first thing it'll hit is a transparent one cell layer thick epithelial sheet. And this sheet of cells, it's a one cell layer thick membrane that just kind of covers the entire front of the eye. It also covers this white part of the eye and the inside of your eyelids and it's known as the conjunctiva. So conjunctiva. Now the conjunctiva is important because it helps protect the eye from dust and it helps moisturize the front of the eye. And if it were to get inflamed or infected, it would cause something known as pink eye. All right, so let's go ahead and follow the ray of light through the conjunctiva. The second thing that the ray of light will hit is this transparent thick piece of tissue that covers the very front of the eye. And that's known as the cornea, the cornea. Now the cornea at this point, at this part of the eye is transparent. And there's a distinction between the cornea and the rest of the eye, which is this, this white thick fibrous tissue. And that's known as the sclera. So whenever you look at someone, that white part of the eye is the sclera and the transparent part of the eye in the very front of the eye where the pupil is, is the cornea. So the cornea is important because it protects the front of the eye, yet it's also transparent, so it helps bend a ray of light. So you can imagine that a ray of light is coming in, hits the eye, hits the cornea, and then gets bent. And that ray of light is further bent by the lens in order for it to be focused uh, to a specific part of the eye. So the, cor the cornea is important in protecting the eye and also bending light. And the sclera is important because it also protects the eye. It's, a, it's this thick fibrous tissue that surrounds the entire eye, it's the white part of the eye. And it's also important because it serves as an attachment point for muscles. So there are a bunch of muscles which allow you to move your eyeball around. So this is the tendon of one of those muscles. And then here's the muscle body itself. These muscles are attached to the eye various places and they allow you to move your eyeball around without actually having to move your head. So that's why the sclera is really important. It protects the eye um, and it also serves as an attachment point for muscles. All right, so let's follow this ray of light. So the ray of light continues through the cornea and the next thing that's gonna hit is actually not a structure, but it's actually just a space. It's an empty space and that empty space is known as the pupil. So if you've ever looked at someone's eye, you know that there's a white part of the eye, there's this white part of the eye, and then if someone has blue eyes, for example, let's say that they have blue eyes, they've got this blue, blue eye, and there's a space in the middle, in the middle of, the, of the blue. So this white part is all the sclera, and we've covered that. And above the iris, in the very middle of the eyeball, is where the cornea is, and underneath that is the iris, and that's what we see here in blue. So the iris basically is a bunch of circular muscles that can, can, can uh, contract and relax and depending on the, whether they're contracted or relaxed, the space that is formed in the very middle of the iris, which is known as the pupil, can either become bigger or smaller. So that is what the light ray then passes through. It passes through the hole that's made by the iris and the iris is right here. So I'll label that, this is the iris. So the iris makes a hole known as the pupil. The pupil can be bigger or smaller depending on the amount of light that's entering the eye. So the next thing that the light will hit is the lens. So as the light passes through the pupil, it then hits the lens. And that lens is important because it helps to focus the light in to a specific part of the retina, which we'll get to next. So the lens is really important in fine-tuning the light ray and changing the angle of the light ray so that it converges to a specific part of the uh, of the eyeball. And the lens is uh, able to change how much it bends the light thanks to suspensory ligaments. So these red things that I have drawn here are known as suspensory ligaments. Suspensory ligaments. And these ligaments basically attach to the lens and they also attach to the ciliary body. So this is the ciliary body. Oh, sorry, not the ciliary body. This is the ciliary muscle. And the ciliary muscle plus the suspensory ligaments together form the ciliary body. And basically by contracting and relaxing, they change the shape of the lens and thus change how much the light ray is bent. So 
what we've talked about so far is the conjunctiva, the cornea, sclera, the iris, and the pupil, as well as the lens. Now the space from the very front of the lens, so from right here, all the way to the cornea, is basically a fluid-filled space. And it's filled with a fluid known as aqueous humor. And the aqueous humor fills something known as the anterior chamber. So this space right here is known as the anterior chamber. And if there's an anterior chamber, there's also a posterior chamber. And the posterior chamber is this space back here, from the back of the lens all the way to the, actually back here, the back of the retina. So this is the posterior chamber. And the posterior chamber is filled with a fluid-like substance known as vitreous humor. Vitreous humor. So the vitreous humor and the aqueous humor help, uh, help provide pressure inside the eyeball so that the eyeball doesn't collapse in on itself. And it also supports uh, the cells lining the inside of the eye with nutrients. Another thing that the vitreous and the aqueous humor help in is optical refraction. So they actually help uh, with the bending of the light rays. So as we follow this ray of light, it's passing through the posterior chamber, it's passing through the vitreous humor, and it moves all the way back, and it basically hits this orange layer of cells. And this layer of cells um, are specialized. They're called photoreceptors. And these photoreceptors lie within this, this orange membrane, and it's known as the retina. So in the eye itself, in the real eye, it's actually not orange. I'm just drawing it here as orange. But the retina basically consists of all these photoreceptors, these specialized cells that once they are exposed to light, they basically convert the light into an electrochemical impulse and they send via axons that impulse to the brain. So the light, the cell gets stimulated and it sends the impulse to the brain through this opening in the back of the eye. And this opening basically becomes the optic nerve. So this right here is the optic nerve. Optic nerve. And the space, the part of the eye where the optic nerve exits is known as the optic disc. So this is the optic disc. And where the optic disc is, there are no photoreceptors. So the, if light were to hit this part of the eye, there would be no photoreceptors to transduce the light ray into an electrochemical impulse that your brain can interpret. So it basically makes, it results in something known as the blind spot. So there's actually, a, everybody is walking around with a certain part of their visual field that they're completely blind to. And for the most part, it doesn't really affect them in any way, shape, or form because your brain can actually fill in what it thinks should be there. So there's a special part of the retina, which is about here, from here to here, and that's known as the macula. So the macula is basically a part of the retina that's rich in cones, and which are a type of photoreceptor. And a specific part of the macula, which is this little dimple right here, is known as the fovea. And the fovea is super densely packed with cones. And it's the part of the eye that if you're reading or if you're trying to get fine details from the environment, that's where you want all the light to go to the fovea because it's able to sense really high amounts of detail. So underneath the retina, is this purplish pinkish membrane known as the choroid the choroid and what the choroid is is it's basically a pigmented layer of tissue that is rich in blood vessels and it supplies the retina with oxygen and nutrients and it's pigmented black in humans and that's uh, that allows light excess light that enters the eye to be absorbed by the black, the black pigment now cats for example don't have this black pigment so the choroid is actually shiny and it helps reflect light back to the retina and it provides them with better night vision. And that's also why if you look inside a cat's eyes, it's shiny versus when you look inside a human's eyes, it's black. It's because of the pigment in the choroid. So now we've covered basically all the different structures of the eye and you should be able to trace a light rays path from the front of the eye to the very back of the eye and understand what the different structures that it hits are.